It's Trevor Kelly is jumping on the headset. Right-handed pitcher for the Pawtucket Red Sox. Triple-A affiliate of the Boston Red Sox. Trevor, thank you for joining us here today. I know you're a busy man. Is this <laughs> first pitch to Blandini is in there for strike one. Yeah, not a problem. Uh, off day, get to come visit Newport, Rhode Island. You can't really, can't really pass up on this offer. Now this oh, one pitch is going to be flown into right. Going back is Vosick, settling underneath it for out number one. Now, you're a Rhode Island native, so it has to feel good not only to be drafted by the Red Sox, obviously that's a huge honor, but then to work your way up through the ranks, and now you're just up the road at Pawtucket, pitching at such a high level, and obviously everyone around here loves you. Yeah, so uh, when I was drafted by the Red Sox, it was... Uh, you know, I, I really couldn't, you know, fathom like ever being. I, I'd always say like I'd give anything to be drafted by the Red Sox. And then when it happened, uh, you know, it was just a, you know, unreal moment for me. Like, just lost it. Like I cried. Like I, being from, you know, not thinking I was draft going to be drafted. I was drafted in the 36th round. So, uh, you know, it was just like a unreal moment where, you know, me and my wife, you know, got to share and. What, what, what was really crazy about that experience was five minutes before I got the call, my wife got up, put on a Red Sox shirt, <laughs> and I was like, are you serious? It was in the stars. Yeah, I was like, are you seriously going to throw that shirt on right now? And she's like, why not? <laughs> and then and then I get the uh, Boston area code. And of course. It was, it was, it was really fate. A, Yeah, I mean, it had to be. Counting um, out a marquee two and two, righty on so righty matchup. It's this one. There you go. Now pitch in there. Excuse me, two and two. Now to marquee, but of course you played at North Carolina in your collegiate career in 2013. You guys made it to Omaha. And I'm from Omaha, so I know all about the College World Series. Yeah. As Cherry looking on out of the windup, they're going to call time. Um, I saw a lot of North Carolina teams make it to the College World Series. How special was that for you guys? Tell me a little bit about that experience. Yeah, one of the greatest baseball experiences I've ever been a part of. Um, you know, making it to Omaha is just hard. Hard, I like just, you know, every team has that goal. But to make it through a regional, a super regional, is one of the hardest things that I can just mentally as a team you go through and uh, you know if you make it through a regional you almost deserve to go to Omaha because uh, just uh, you, you can't really play matchups you everyone's got to be kind of uh, you know on their a game this so it's gonna be bunted by Shemet and Cherry's gonna throw to first but it's an overthrow and so Shemet is safe at first and moving up to third on the play is Markey so runners on the corners with one away here in the first. And of course, along that way, you were facing off against in-state rival, North Carolina State, best pitcher in yeah. the nation at the time, oh Carlos gosh. Rodon, who's in the pros right yep. now. Uh, lost was, to him at first, and then you guys came back and beat him. Yeah, he was uh, unbelievable. Carlos was, you know, had our number all year. And then when we got matched up with him and, you know, the first game of Omaha, we were like, oh my gosh. You know, this isn't happening, but, you know, we, we were up for the challenge, and unfortunately we came up short that first game, but then we, uh, you know, we got hungry, and, you know, we came back, and, you know, we knew that we had a shot to face them again, and then, you know, we had uh, Hobbs Johnson on the mound throw, I think, all but one. Uh, takes off for second, throw down. All but one fastball. Yeah. All but one fastball. Yeah, <laughs> it was unbelievable. Right? Like, just they couldn't hit the fastball. <laughs> That's all I'll say about NC State. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of in-state rivalry there. Yep. So you guys ended up beating NC State and had a trip to trip to Omaha. And you said, I know you guys played LSU, and that's one of the fan favorites every single time down there. Yeah, that was actually a unreal game because when you get to Omaha, you really don't you you hear all the stories and. You don't really know what to expect. You want to kind of soak it all in. But then when you're playing a LSU, it's they else. travel really well. And I mean, that place was all purple and gold. And you just, like, you, we had our little family section, and that's pretty much it's it. Gone, yeah. Um, I tell you but what. But it was all LSU fans. Being from Omaha, I know they travel well. And then because of that, everyone from Omaha 
picks LSU and chooses to root for them. Um, they're one of the more fun teams to watch. Yeah. Now, I know talking to you before the game, um, you have a little bit of an unorthodox delivery, but you developed that after your freshman year in college. Yeah. Um, so I got to North Carolina, and I was thrown over the top. Threw hard. Um, obviously, you know, you throw more in college than you do in uh, high school. So my velo kind of crept back down in low 90s. I was like kind of low to mid 90s. Now this one's going to be lined back up the um, middle. Bellini with it off one hop, throws the first but yeah. for out number three. So I was a little wild over the top. Just didn't, things didn't click as well as I would have liked right off the bat. And it was almost, it was, you know, close to the end of the ACC play. And I had still not gotten in. Like I've yet to pitch in a college game yet. And I'm just doing everything I'm do like told. And I was just getting really discouraged. And I was like, you know what? I gotta make a change or they're gonna cut me. And that's what I did. So one of the series that, you know, the guys were on the road, I, I went back home and uh, pitched to my high school team and for some reason I like last like four pitches I threw sidearm I was like why not and uh, for some reason my pitching coach had the radar gun out it read 88 I was like that's good <laughs> enough for me that's I'll just go back to school and show them that a week later I'm in my first game and I'm bumping 94 from there and oh, I'm wow. like where like where has this been? I've yet to see it come back, but <laughs> I think it was just like the whole build up and how bad I wanted to be out there. Right. Uh, you know, got me the, those num those readings, but uh, um, right now I feel like I'm in a good spot. Uh, you know, and it, it all came from, you know, just college, really working with it and really learning on my own. So then after you developed that sidearm delivery, you ended up in 2013, like I said, you went to College World Series and you ended up in the Cape for a summer down in Orleans, right? Yep. How so was that experience? Like, I know you had a summer in the Cal Ripken League and then, of course, in the in the Cape Cod League. You know, the Cal Ripken League did a lot for me uh, just because it was my first year really throwing sidearm. Um, so my pitching coach there really had, a, you know, a, a pretty – big impact on you know where I am now just because I, I really haven't changed much since then because I did really I had a really good summer and uh, just rode with it and I got to work out with Darren O'Day uh, Baltimore yep. Oriole guy and uh, yeah he showed me a, you know he got me on the right path so uh, another sidearm thrower yeah yeah so um, he kind of showed me like just uh, you know really gave me a few tips here and there and uh you know a few workouts that really you know focus on and what i need to be like thinking mindset wise uh so that's where it kind of all started but then um playing up in the cape you know there's not really any other experience that you can put up there for a summer um by playing in the cape it was a lot of fun i had a great host family that really made my experience that much better um, you know, all anyone that is hosting a you know a summer ball player is is just you know that's that's what really makes the summer experience that much better. Are you still in contact with them? Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've had three, four host families uh, throughout my baseball career, and all of them every holiday text them and or call them like. We, we still stay in touch. That's special. So, yeah, it, it is. It, um, you know, the Cape was a lot of a lot of fun. Well, now you're with the Paw Sox. Obviously, the sidearm delivery has worked out for you. You're with the AAA affiliate of the Boston Red Sox. And this season, you have a 1.10 ERA with 28 strikeouts through 32 and two-thirds innings pitched. You've only given up 26 hits and two home runs with a juiced ball at that level. So yeah. uh, everything seems to be clicking right now. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, our bullpen and our starters, uh, you know, complement me in, in a way that, you know, sets me up pretty well. And hopefully I do the same for them. Uh, but, 
Yeah, the the baseballs are, you know, another topic. But man, <laughs> <laughs> that has to be frustrating I, as a pitcher, right? Yeah, I just try and not miss middle of the plate because <laughs> you know you guys, it, if you get any hitter, really, it's like even the nine hole hitter, you get their right. hands extended, it, the ball is going. Uh, but that's that's what makes me you know pretty valuable is that I got that you know east west movement and you know I, I honestly can bring a little bit more than that by adding a little north south into it um you know it's just a different look so right now I, I feel like I'm in a great spot mentally and physically um to get out and that's what I've been doing just attacking the zone throwing strikes and you know working in ending out just starting on the plate ending off and you know you can't really do much more than that and just hopefully they don't hit it over the fence with those new balls yeah well it's been working with you so far as this pitch is going to be flown into left from gustin but coming in is shemet for out number one as Holzwasser tracks back to first so one away here in the bottom of the first for the goal still tied at zero here in newport as hudson haskin of tulane settles in Trevor, again, going back on your summer ball experience, what would be your advice to these players? Again, drafted in the 36th round, everyone on these two teams here today between Bay Sox and also the Gulls, they were probably watching the draft very closely a few weeks ago. What would be your advice to them? This is why they're here this summer, to work on their craft and to get better and improve every single day. What would be your advice to give them this summer? Uh, probably just have as much fun as you can because – you know, when you're having fun, everything's going well. You're playing. Obviously, if you're not having fun, you're not playing well. And if you're having fun, you're playing well. That's that's part of it. Everyone gets that. But you know, once once you are drafted, it it loses a sense of you know, it, it is a job at the end of the day. And you know, you're always on edge because you really don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. Whether I've had friends get released at when they're doing really well, and you know that's one thing that I've seen. Like just you know, it's it's heartbreaking. So it's a it's part of the business that you really don't know what tomorrow brings. So have fun today, and that's that's kind of what I would say. I like that. And this game is revolving just you know up through all the ranks here. This is the first year where they're testing out a new extra innings rule where, you know, starting in the top of the 10th inning, the runner on second base. What, you know, mentality are you in as a pitcher? Going, to, if you're entering a game, you know, it's an extra innings, and there's already a runner on second base. Yeah. What's going through your mind on the mound? Um, you understand as a pitcher that that run on second is unearned. So when I get up there, I'm, don't be afraid to walk a guy. Don't be afraid to give up a hit. Because as soon as you try, you try and pitch around someone, or like try not, try to pitch to not give up a hit, is when that run scores most of the time. I've been on that that end of things, but you know, I feel like I'm at my best when I got a base, the bases loaded, and you know, if they're not my runs, then I'm more of a like an attack, like let them hit it, but see what they have then they are my runs so i don't know when you're when extra innings it's don't try and do too much this one's yeah, gonna you, be you just got to be more aggressive grounded right back to the pitcher off a of wash burn he tried to field it but couldn't cleanly so haskins aboard first with a infield single as holzwasser is now in scoring position for the goals how scary is that on a, for a pitcher to get really a comeback or right <laughs> to you on the mound i don't like that at <laughs> all i've i've had in Lowell, my first, it was short season. So right. right after I got drafted, I had last game of the year. First pitch of the last inning. You almost got out of there clean. Oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> I almost did. And uh, first pitch, took one off the earlobe. Oh. Like, it whizzed past my ear. And I was like, oh, my gosh. Wow. <laughs> Next kid threw down a bunt, and I was already on second base. I was backpedaling. <laughs> and... Uh, short story or long story short gave up a grand slam <laughs> <laughs> at that point you were Ruined. done yeah yeah i mean you were checked out other than that like my short season numbers are like kind of 
in flux. Obviously, like, not as many games there, but um, that one really hurt me because I was like, you know, my, my, like, career stats would have been right. pretty, like, really impressive if it wasn't for that, that, that last game. Well, I got to ask. I have a couple friends that either are broadcasters or are in independent leagues or in minor leagues low level, and they tell me stories about some minor league or independent leagues, um, bus rides or this or that. Um, do you have any stories you could tell? Because I've heard bus drivers r driving the wrong way for two hours and then having to go back or buses <laughs> breaking down and having to drive or walk miles to the nearest town to work it out. Do you have any stories that you could share with us here on the broadcast? Uh. I mean, there's too <laughs> many really to pick from one. You know, minor league in itself is just one of the best stories ever. But uh, you know, that what you just said is, you know, pretty much like all it's of them. It's the like epitome it's of just, it all. Yeah. You know, uh, especially in a ball. A ball is really when you're grinding every day. Um, you know, you get one bus and you're doubling up and. You're having to carry a lot of stuff. You're having <laughs> it like my every every level. There's PB and J, um, but like a ball is just like stale bread and just. There you go. This one's gonna um, be pulled into right from Vosick, and they're gonna hold up Holzwasser at third. So bases loaded now for the goals in the bottom of the first with only one away. Yeah, it's definitely not. You you can't really prepare for it because you're like really this is. <laughs> I you go from North Carolina trips to Omaha, and then PB and J with stale yep, bread every day. That's honestly what the hardest thing. Was. Like I, I go from North Carolina to rookie ball, and I'm there's zero fans, chain link fence, <laughs> and like one umpire. Like <laughs> I was just like, what am I doing? Is this worth it? And then I go, like I finish that year, and then I come back to my first spring training. And then I make, I don't break camp. I make, I'm in extended spring training, and I'm like, what am I doing here? Extended like, is it is it really worth it? Do I really want to pursue baseball? And extended spring training is something else because uh, the pay isn't great, if any. Oh yeah, I mean, it, you really you can't you can't be in it for the money because yeah, right. you know you can't you can't really like the money's not great. I, I will say that right. it's not. I mean, it's a serious You're in it grind for the end through goal. the minors, yeah. But yeah, it's a it's a grind. They call it a grind for a reason, and you know, you're you're in it for the end goal, the dream that you've always had as a little kid, and that's 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 it. But at the end of the day, it's worked out for you. I'm trying. I'm trying. Uh, you know, I feel like I'm pretty close, and um, I'm in a good spot mentally and physically, and that's that's all you can really ask for at this level, and. Uh, you know the numbers are that are there, and you know hopefully I keep it keep it going. That's all I can do. Stay patient. Now this there it is. To Bellini is going to be flown into center. Shemet going back, it's looking up. It's going to be off the fence. Coming in to score is Holzwasser. Rounding third is Haskin. Now that Winterroad puts up the brakes, and so one run will score for Newport, and the bases are loaded once again for the goals. As they lead one to nothing. The big left-hander, Ryan Tours, is settling in at the dish. Trevor, you're talking about when you were playing in extended spring training, you were going through, you know, do you still want to do this? Mm -hmm. Now you're at AAA level on the brink of, you know, making a, you know, going to the majors. What clicked? What clicked to really set your mind that, okay, I really want to pursue this dream and I'm sticking with baseball? Yeah, I mean, I knew I had it all along. Like, I've, my whole – like going back to the, my college story it was like I always had to prove someone wrong and that's what I did I just you know my first spring training I followed the book that they gave me you know the throwing program was you know if you do follow a program it's everyone's different no book can tell you what to do so I really came in I didn't throw a bullpen until the first day I reported so I was really behind up my velo is down and you know, I thought mechanically I wasn't there. So I was like, oh, boy. I wasn't doing well, like, in, in the, you know, the scrimmages or the, the games or whatever. And, uh, you know, I got – I didn't make a team. So I was like, all right, I got to get lower. And I got lower, and I, that worked out for a few weeks. And then I kind of 
kept crep creeping up in, in my arm slot and my velo started rising and rising and rising and then I was like, all right, I'm, I'm back. I'm finally there. And finally, I, when short season broke, um, I went to Lowell for a day for a practice and then they sent me to Greenville. Had a great year in Greenville and then by the end of the, the season in Greenville, I was up in Salem for, I don't know, like a week. And so, you know, I climbed up there. I, I, you know, I was off to a slow start, but, you know, I, I had a really good year then. So, and ever since I've had that, like, that, all right, halfway through the year, I make a promotion. You know, so hopefully this year, you know, we're, getting we're halfway. We're getting there. At all star break. Yep. You know, you never know. Wishful thinking. Yep. <laughs> Who's one MLB player you want to challenge yourself and face in the uh, yeah. face? Uh, probably the whole Yankees lineup. Okay. <laughs> I, mean, I like that got, mentality. They got some big swings, and you know, I, I like those guys. Yeah. You know, they. I'm not like I don't throw that hard, but you know, for a sidearm guy, I, I feel like I'm I am a power sidearm guy, like if you'd have to call it that. But uh, you know, I do have a lot of run on my ball, and you know, I can make it do a few other like a few different things. So uh, in the in Triple A, I've had pretty good success to you know big swing guys, and you know, obviously everyone gives up you know a few good hits and. You know, for the most part, I feel like I'm pretty consistent enough to get outs there, especially against that lineup. I like that coming from a Red Sox guy, too. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you have to have that mentality, right? Are you kidding me? It's in, like it's in your DNA at this point. As soon as I get up there, I hate everyone. <laughs> <laughs> like, at, part of the minor leagues is like, all right, I got to go through it. Right. You know, but, you know, at the, at the big league level, you, you're – yeah, not that you're not trying to pl uh, play to win every single game, but it's more, uh, yeah, kind of, and like you have to be a little bit yeah, selfish. you got to be that a little, level. yeah, yeah. That's where I'm going. Like, you got to be a little selfish in the minor leagues, but then in the big leagues, like finally you get back to that win every single game. Right. Like, especially in college, where I, lo I love coming in every single game. Like my senior year, I did it. I feel like I was in every single game. I love that feeling. Do you miss that mentality a little bit? Because I know a lot of guys in the pros uh, listening to some of their interviews, they talk about how they miss those days in college playing for your teammates. Yeah, definitely. And then once you get up, you know, if I get up to Boston, I'm just going to be so excited. Like, I'm going to want to win every single game. I want to be in every single inning. And, you know, that's – I feel like you won't get that much out of – you know, obviously you'll get it out of a lot of guys, but like growing up a Red Sox fan, diehard Red Sox fan, you know, it's just it means a little bit more to me, I feel like. This one's going to be grounded to first throw to the plate is in time for a one out back throw to first. It's going to be off the glove of the first baseman Henry and into right field. So coming around to score for the goals is Vosick. So there's two away now and two runners in scoring position moving over to second on the play was Tours on the throwing air, and over to third was Bellini. So the goal's now up two to nothing with two away, and two runners in scoring position. How close are you with some of the Red Sox at the major leagues? Because I know we've seen a lot of, you know, triple A guys move up, you know, recently. Uh, so, you know, how yeah, close so are you with some of those guys? I'm really close with, uh, you know, Let's see, Josh Taylor's up there right now. Travis Lakins is up there. Michael Chavis, I'm really close with. You know, we've gone, we've been locker buddies for forever. And what a year he's having. Yeah, he's, he's, I knew he had it in him, <laughs> but like, not like this. Yeah. You know, the, the ice horse. The, the home runs that he's hitting right now are, you know, I, I'm not sure if I ever saw him in BP. You know, the way that they're going over the monster is just really impressive. And, you know, I'm just really excited for him. Um, you know, my wife and his girlfriend get along really well, so we got really close there and uh, couldn't be happier for him. But uh, going through spring training with the big league club, you know, backing up all those games, I got to really – I got to know quite a few of them, and 
you know, just seeing them on TV every day, it was just, it's just kind of like, it's that different feeling, but they're all great guys, really good guys. And everyone around the majors says you guys have the smartest manager in baseball at the moment. Yeah, Corey, he's, he's I mean, everything that he did last year, it, it was like, you can't really, like, he made moves that had to work. And he hit on every single move that he made. So uh, right now, like the guys are just started off a little slow, which no, obviously no Red Sox fan wants to see. But you know, if I do know one thing, it's just they're gonna keep battling, and you know they're creeping up now. So before you blink, they're gonna be three games back. I mean, they're as dangerous as anybody. So I, yeah. I want to put it past them. I think my favorite Cora story comes when he was a player. You know, they didn't want to re-sign uh, Pedroia. And it was because he didn't steal enough bases. And so Cora could sense that he was, they were locker mates, and he could sense something was wrong, and Pedroia said, well, they're not going to re-sign me because I don't steal enough bases. He said, look to me in the dugout, and when I say go, you go. And he sent him 15 times, said go 15 times throughout the year. Pedroia got his 15 bags, wasn't caught once. Yeah. That just goes to show the intricacies that he looks for, the details he looks for, and how smart of a guy he is. Yeah, from all the stories that I hear, um, just Corey is he's a mastermind of just a lot of little things that go on in baseball, from like just picking up signs, picking up, you know, pitchers, tipping pitches, and, you know, just the, the little things that can win you ball games in the long run. You know, those are the things that Cora really does well from what I hear, and, you know, I can I can only wait to, you know, feel that experience with him. Well, it's only a matter of time. We kept you here for a whole inning. I know you got a busy schedule game tomorrow against Durham up the road at, in Pawtucket, so we're going to let you uh, get out of here. Thank you for stopping by, though. Yeah, Trevor no, Kelly, for having me. right-handed pitcher for the Paw Sox, uh, soon to be for the Boston Red Sox, though, I'm sure with the year you're having. So thank you, though, for stopping by. Yeah, Thanks for having me, guys.